Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Can you hear me OK? Awesome. All right. So you are in LinkedIn on LinkedIn, how to combine account-based marketing and social selling. I am Ty Heath, a global lead for market development at LinkedIn. There, I'm focused on educating our agencies and partners. And I have to say, I'm so excited to be here. I've been coming to Inbound since 2012. So I'm OG Inbound. This is one of my favorite events. So I'm so excited to talk with you today. Let me first share a little bit with you about how this presentation was born. So about a year ago, I was having brunch in a cafe with my husband, Brian. He is a salesperson, and he happens to be a sales navigator expert. So we were chatting it up, and we, I don't know if you do this, but we were talking about digital marketing strategy over brunch. Does anyone else talk with, about strategy with their boo or their, their significant other? OK, so I'm not alone. I'm like, I, I was thinking I was certifiably dorky, but clearly I'm, not, I'm in good company here. So anyway, we were chatting it up, and one of the things we were talking about, because I'm focused on our marketing side and he's focused on sales side, is wouldn't it be great if before marketing launched a program that we would spend time talking more with sales and understanding those insights that are so powerful to having a su successful campaign? Wouldn't it be nice if we sat down together and came up with objectives and KPIs before moving forward? So, Maybe it was the mimosa-fueled haze of that conversation. But afterward, I went back to our house, and I scheduled on my calendar three times a week for the rest of that year to spend a little bit more, more time understanding Sales Navigator. So I had dabbled in it a little bit because I worked for LinkedIn, but hadn't really had an opportunity to focus in and think about how it might support me as a marketer, right? So, you can thank mimosas uh, for this presentation today. So because you're in this room, I know that you know that account-based marketing and social selling is likely a part of your go-to-market strategy. And if it's not, maybe you see it as something that could potentially become a key part of your go-to-market strategy. Right? I also know that you know that it takes more than sales and marketing to make a powerful marketing strategy work. You need buy-in from executives. You need buy-in from product. You need subject matter experts to weigh in on content. So it really takes a village to build a powerful program that engages customers with a, a wonderful experience. So that's what we're going to talk about today. First, I'm going to start with some insights on sales and marketing alignment and what's possible. Then we'll talk about some effective content to get you rolling successfully on ABM and also social selling. And then finally, we're going to look at LinkedIn, and I'll share some strategies to help you get started. So we have about 45 minutes. We're going to move pretty quickly. If you have any questions, LinkedIn is in the building. We have a LinkedIn lounge here. Also, feel free to shoot me a LinkedIn connection with a question, and you can also tweet at me at Tyrona on Twitter. Now, there's going to be quite a bit of information in this presentation. I want you to think of this as like a little appetizer before a larger meal, especially if you're just getting started with Sales Navigator and Campaign Manager. Don't worry, we have your back. Don't worry about getting all of the different things of remembering everything here. We'll share this content as well. Sound good? All righty. So with that, let's set the record straight on a few things. So first and foremost, I want to understand who I'm talking to in this room. How many of you consider yourselves to be marketers? Do we have marketers in the building? OK, a lot of marketers are here. How about salespeople? We have salespeople? Awesome, we also have salespeople. Now, how many of you consider yourselves to be hybrids, people that are both sales and marketing? Awesome, OK. So hybrids are kind of like, I'm a hybrid. I'm, it's like an interesting vampire, werewolf combination, right? Um, so we have some of those in the room. And I want you to know that the future of marketing is really blending the role between sales and marketing. Soon enough, marketers of the future and salespeople of the future will be expected to understand both sides of that coin. Marketers are expecting for salespeople to join them at that top of the funnel and help have those conversations that build awareness. 
and salespeople are expecting marketers to join them at the bottom of the funnel to help accelerate the sales cycle and close those deals. So more and more, I imagine maybe next year when I ask that question or someone asks that question, everyone will be like, I'm a hybrid. Anyways, so to set the record straight, because I want to be clear, we're not just talking about ABM here. ABM leaves out salespeople. We need salespeople to be a part of this conversation. What we're talking about is marketing and sales orchestration. So companies that fail to invest in orchestration often fail to launch successful account-based programs. They also fail to realize the results of those programs. The main obstacle to that is change management. So a failure to invest in the change the change management required to move your organization into this new space. So what I mean by that is a failure to come together on common goals and KPIs, a failure to share the data and insights needed to provide a great experience for the customer, a failure to, sta to have stand-up meetings between sales and marketing where you understand what's happening within accounts and you can iterate on your approach and continue to improve. So by change management, it's really time to think about how do we break down that silo. So I want to talk with marketing or folks that consider themselves to be marketers first. Now, we have OD'd on marketing automation. I understand that there are advantages. It's effective. It's efficient. We would hate to think that our messages were in any way irritating or unhelpful to our customers. But the reality is, when the core of the experience is a poor one, we're not doing marketing automation, we're doing mass alienation. So it's time for us to, to think about and revisit what is the connection, what is the engagement that we're having with our customers, and is it helpful, is it timely, is it relevant? And us salespeople, let's have a talk. So we're still cold calling. So we th say things like, the next call will convert. It's a numbers game. But the reality is, when only 3% of cold calls are effective, it's time to rethink that strategy. In the modern age of digital and social, there's a better way of doing things. And that's where social selling comes in. Does anyone here use Sales Navigator already? All right, so there are a few people that use Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator and social selling done well can eliminate the need for cold calling. Our customers are navigating an increasingly complex environment. So it's up to us to connect with them and engage with them to give them the helpful information and provide guidance through that. And if we do that well, we can eliminate the need to have to do cold calling. And today we expect that type of experience. We expect a personalized experience and even in B2B marketing. Right? So I appreciate the fact that Amazon knows I need NyQuil when I'm sick. I don't like to suffer. I, know, I appreciate they know I need lactate because I love gelato. I love dancehall reggae, and I'm glad that Spotify knows that, and they made me a daily mix. I also appreciate that Netflix knows I love science fiction. Any, anybody else love Black Mirror in here? The Black Mirror fans, yay. OK, so we expect this engagement. And the reality is, at this point, we don't really have a choice. Our customers are gauging their experiences by the last best experience they had with brands that they adore. So we need to think about, how do we create this personalized experience? One of the first steps in that process is having sales and marketing come together and think about, what does that journey look like? And how can we work together to make it a more powerful one? So I want to have all of you imagine, because we've got sales, marketers, and hybrids in the room. If I ask marketing to describe what does your experience look like, most likely you're going to draw me a funnel. If I ask a salesperson to highlight their experience, most likely they're going to draw a pipeline. And this is part of the challenge. We can't even agree on what this looks like. Is it a funnel? Is it a pipeline? Is it a funnel? Is it a pipe? I don't know, flywheel. right? Why we're, we're flywheel. <laughs> a flywheel? That, hey, I think he has some foresight into what's going on here. So uh, we can't even agree on that. But the reality is that it, we need to figure this out because it looks crazy to our customers when the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. 
right? So it's time for us to take a look at this. One example is as marketers, we are focused on getting an MQL or an SQL, sales marketing lead, marketing qualified lead. Once we do that, we hand it off to sales, and we're like, bye, you know, not my concern anymore. Part of that is a breakdown in what's possible in creating a powerful process to engage the customer. So we really want to have that full support and come together on perhaps a flywheel, right? Okay. The other challenge is that sales and marketing, we're using different data sets. So on the marketing side, we have marketing automation platform. We also may have a data management platform. We store our prospects and customer information. On the sales side, we have a CRM where we're managing the deal and saving the progress and what's happening in, that, in those conversations. And this is the underlying challenge because on top of all of this, oftentimes is a complex set of tools, our tech stack, everything we're using to further our efforts. And these systems are largely independent. So as much as we wanna be BFFs, part of the challenge is we have independent data systems that aren't speaking with each other. So that leaves a lot of potential on the table. So now I wanna to turn to some research, a real example that I hope underscores the sales and marketing alignment value for each of you in the room. To protect the innocent, we're gonna call the company, company XYZ. I'm gonna walk you through this. So with this particular company, their marketing team was focused on reaching six million members on LinkedIn. Their sales team overall had around 200,000 connections on LinkedIn. And what we found in this research is that of that six million members, marketing was really only providing coverage to about 23% of the relationships that sales had. So when you think about it, just to put that in, in contrast, that's 75% of the relationships that salespeople had, marketing was not providing any coverage or support. So when we look at it a different way, it gets even worse. So we know because of Sales Navigator, the conversations that salespeople are actively having, there's the conversations that are in pipeline or in, in discussion and moving forward. And in this case, the sales team had about 17,000 leads within their pipeline. And when we looked at the overlay of coverage that marketing was delivering for this company, only 9% of those leads were being nurtured by sponsored content. So when you think about it that way, that's leaving a lot of potential. It's leaving a lot of, frankly, a lot of money on the table. In an ideal world, we would have that 100% audience alignment. Now, marketing will always have a bigger scope because we're targeting net new relationships. We have, we're building the pipeline, we're building the conversations. Sales is a little bit more focused, right? So they're gonna be, have a little bit smaller of an audience that they're pursuing. But if we're doing well, and if we wanna realize that full potential, we would have 100% confluence in that audience alignment. So I wanna look at this a, a slightly different way now. We love our two by two matrices at LinkedIn. See these all the time. So let me break this one down for you. This chart is showing marketing engagement on the X axis and sales engagement on the Y axis. If no one's doing anything, everyone's kind of sitting on their hands, we have an untapped audience. If sales is pulling weight and we don't have marketing involved, we have a missed opportunity. If marketing is moving and sales hasn't yet engaged, we have a warm audience. What we really wanna see is that up into the right motion, that sweet spot where sales and marketing is fully aligned to realize that potential. So what I wanna do now is show you with company XYZ, as we look at specific segments that they're targeting, what's possible when you look at the entire competitive set for sales and marketing alignment and the correlation to actual performance of business. If I could get this to go forward, that would be great. Okay, perfect. 
All right, here we are. So looking at company XYZ, Here we go. Okay, looking at company XYZ represented by the purple ball here, the size of the ball corresponds to the, to the size of the member audience on LinkedIn, right? What we wanna see is that up and to the right motion. In this case, company XYZ was targeting business decision makers, they were targeting IT decision makers, and they were also targeting affluent millennials. Right off the bat, looking at this chart, we can see that they are pretty engaged from a sales standpoint, but that marketing really hasn't gotten involved. But what about when we take a look at the peer average? How are their peers doing in this competitive set? So they're doing a little bit better. You see more of that up and to the right motion, in particular with affluent millennials, you see a stronger performance in the peer average set. But what about the peer leader? What about the leaders in this particular market? How are they performing from a sales and marketing alignment or engagement standpoint? So they're doing really well. So what this chart tells you is that there's a correlation between that engagement and perhaps market performance. And so this is something for all of us to think about. And now, so we've seen that there's this correlation I want to share with you one more research report that was done. This is a research report done by Wheelhouse Advisors. They did an impact of alignment study, and they saw all sorts of great results for companies that really invested in bringing their sales and marketing teams closer together. Faster revenue growth, faster margin growth, higher retention, higher win rates. In this study, they looked at companies that either met or exceeded the benchmark for sales and marketing alignment what they found is that those companies outperformed their peers with an uplift of over 208% revenue contributed by marketing. So that's a really astounding number. And the question is, how did they get there? Well, one, they were able to access more accounts. Two, of the accounts they were able to access, they were able to close more deals. And then also the lifetime value of those accounts was greater because of the investment that they made. So while that's an astounding number, you, you kind of get the point that it, these different investments compound upon each other, leading to that 208 uplift in revenue contributed by marketing. So if I haven't convinced you by now, hopefully now you'll run out the door after this is done and start thinking about how do you bring your sales and marketing efforts a little bit closer together, even if you're just making an incremental change. So now I'm gonna turn into how do you use LinkedIn to try to achieve some of these types of results? How do you get started on LinkedIn? And then I'm gonna show you a case study of a company that took this on holistically so you can get a sense of the results that they achieved. So it's time for a new approach. I want, first of all, I wanna give a shout out. Is Terminus, is anyone from Terminus in the room by any chance? Any Terminus people in here? Okay, so if anyone sees a Terminus person, give them some props and respect. I went to the Flip My Funnel event a couple weeks back, and it was an amazing event. In that event, they shared this framework, Fit, Intent, Engage, and I thought it was just powerful, it was magnifique, and I thought it would, it's just a great way to think about the approach to how do you start to move to a more aligned organization where you have great marketing and sales orchestration. So starting with Fit, how do you build a unified view of the customer where you can agree on the accounts and the approach to connecting with them? How do you learn more about your audience and continuously iterate on that approach so that you can understand buyer readiness? And then finally, how do you orchestrate a process where you facilitate engagement between marketing and sales to provide an excellent customer experience? So let's take a look at how you do this on LinkedIn. So the first step towards Netflix level personalization starts with a data-driven approach. Within LinkedIn's marketing suite, there are some excellent tools to help you get started with this, especially since content, as we all know, is at the center of a powerful marketing approach. So the first tool I wanna highlight is website demographics. 
With website demographics, you take a LinkedIn Insights tag and you put that in the code of a website and then you can start getting really powerful information about who is visiting the website. So for example, you can get information like company name, industry, job title. It gives you a clearer picture of who is visiting and then you can make some really powerful decisions about content. The cool thing about this is that because LinkedIn has first party data and people are updating their profiles, you can be clear on the accuracy of the information you're getting on people who are visiting your site. The other tool I wanna highlight is trending content. With trending content, you can see for a particular segment what types of content they're engaging it with, what are the topics that they care about, and what are the topics that they're sharing. So again, getting deeper insight into the audience allowing you to make more powerful, powerful decisions about the type of content and also thinking about the buying committee, who, what kind of content do you need to develop for each decision maker in the buying committee, especially content that you can then hand over to a salesperson. So speaking of content, I wanna highlight a couple tips on creating content for excellent marketing and sales orchestration. First and foremost, we gotta talk to sales. Sales has the juice, right? We're in the field, we're talking to customers, we know we have the insights on the account. Marketers and salespeople need to sit down and think about how do you package up those insights on the key accounts. Next, you wanna focus on the buying committee. So research shows that between three and six people are engaged in a decision-making process. So you wanna map the ecosystem and understand what kind of content is gonna provide value to each member of the ecosystem. So for example, if you are working on an account and there's a CIO, a CMO, and a CFO involved, a CIO might care about privacy, a CMO might care about ease of use, and a CFO is gonna be cash money. How much does it cost, right? And what value is this gonna provide? So you really wanna think about that, map out the ecosystem and think about type of content you would create. And then next, you wanna value thought leadership. Buying a cloud analytics platform is a lot different than buying a t-shirt or a Coca-Cola. So B2B buying can be a pretty emotional process even though we don't necessarily think of it as being that. Right? So you wanna really de-risk the buying process for customers who need guidance on the complex decisions it, make, it takes to make a, a full-blown decision on, on making that type of a purchase. And there's a gap between, in, in the perception of the value of thought leadership between marketers and actual buyers. So we did some research on it. If you Google the true value of thought leadership, as a study we did with Edelman, you can read more about how important thought leadership is in creating a powerful decision-making journey for your customers. Next, speaking of journey, you wanna know what the journey is. And this takes true collaboration between sales and marketing to think about what does the experience look like from awareness all the way through to advocacy? How do you facilitate it? What information can you offer along the way to pave a lighted path for the customer? Diversifying your formats is, is really about thinking, again, with the folks that you're trying to reach, what type of content is easiest for them to consume? What are the right distribution channels? This is not very much different than stand, a standard marketing program. It's really about what works best for your customer. And then finally, in the case studies I read on how people are performing with account-based programs, time and time again, the true differentiating factor is that they're always optimizing. They have weekly stand-up meetings to share the insights that they learn so they can continue to iterate on their marketing programs. So they're constantly testing. So moving back into fit, now that we've talked about content, I wanna share something. So we've been talking about sales and marketing alignment and how important it is. Wouldn't it be great if you had some technology to help you do this? So with this upcoming release, called Sales Navigator and Contact Targeting, this allows you to nurture your organization's high value accounts and leads. It's coming soon. Here's how it works. A salesperson in Sales Navigator can identify the leads 
that are most important to them. From there, with the integration to Campaign Manager, those leads get ported over in lists in Campaign Manager. Then a marketer, now knowing what leads are important to the salesperson, can run marketing campaigns to target them. So they can run sponsored content in mail and other parts of LinkedIn's marketing suite. So this is an incredibly powerful feature designed to help you be better collaborators between sales and marketing. And we've seen really great results from this. So we've been piloting this since last summer and we've seen tremendous results. So 20% uplift in in-mail response rates, 196% uplift in company page views and 94% uplift in seller profile views. So this pilot has been really strong and we're really looking forward to bringing this to you very soon. So we've talked about fit. I wanna talk about some tools that will help you better understand buyer intent. But first I wanna introduce two concepts for you to think about as you go back to your organizations. So imagine with me, everyone in this room is on the same team. So we've been working together for some time. We've gotten to know each other. We're braiding each other's hair, or finish each other's sentences, whatever floats your boat. It's all good. In any case, we've been through this sales cycle now a couple times. So we know some things that we didn't know before. One of the things we know is that if we were able to sell into an account, it's likely that there are other accounts that are like the account we sold into that we could be pursuing, right? We also know who was in the buying committee and how they evaluated the decision they needed to make. We know what was engaging to them and how best to engage them. We know what kind of content worked in that engagement process. Wouldn't it be great if we were able to take all of that knowledge, document it, and systematically bring it back into our marketing approach? And so this gentleman here talked about a flywheel. This is a flywheel. Because essentially, over time, if you take on this system, you're gonna build a flywheel that moves faster and faster. Your targeting is gonna be more effective. Your sales cycle times will be faster because you're consistently learning at what's the right approach or what's the critical path to engage the customer. Clicker is fun. Okay, here we go. Now, propensity models. So this is another part of customer intent to think about. I imagine many people in this room are already using some form of propensity modeling. Propensity modeling uh, for example, could be like lead scoring. So those of you who are doing lead scoring, that's actually a form of propensity modeling. All it is is that using a firm's firmographics, demographics, and historical engagement, we can get a picture that helps us predict behavior or helps us find lookalike accounts and leads based on that data. So this is an incredibly powerful tool uh, using artificial intelligence to empower sales and marketers to make, to make more focused decisions about the accounts and leads that you wanna pursue. So it helps you prioritize, essentially. So 20% of decision makers change jobs each year. Wouldn't it be great if someone told you when someone changed a job, right? For a salesperson, this can be one of the most frustrating things. So you're in the middle of a deal conversation and it breaks down, right? Because the person left the company, they're no longer there. Or the other side of the coin is the person moves to a new company and if you had a great relationship in that case, it may be an opening for you to start a conversation to move into a new account. Sales Navigator is the only tool that programmatically and systematically tells you when people change jobs. So this allows you to adjust your strategy on the fly and think about how you're, what decisions you're gonna make based on this person's changing job, right? Also, with data validation, this information maps directly into your CRM so that you don't have to update it there, making you more efficient and up to date on what's going on with a particular lead and account. That intel can be extremely valuable for both sales and marketing. Also with Sales Navigator, one of the things that is so key for salespeople is engaging with customers in a timely and relevant fashion. 
coming soon to Sales Navigator, you'll get notified when leads show interest, if they're engaging with a piece of sponsored content, if they're researching a company page. So now you'll be able to make decisions about how to engage them based on how they are engaging with content that you shared or with your, your company information. So this is really timely and will help salespeople again engage with customers in a more meaningful way. So I don't know about you, but if I'm going to have a sales conversation or even a marketing conversation, and in reality, whenever you're looking to make a new connection, before you actually go into that meeting, don't you Google that person's name or don't you try to learn more about that company before you talk with them? I want to know what the CEO is doing. I want to know what the latest news is. All of that in information is incredibly important before you walk into that meeting. So now, this recently released feature within Sales Navigator, a new version of account pages, helps you keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in a particular account. So you can determine if that account is relevant, it can recommend leads for you, offer insights, is the company growing, what's the revenue, what are the possible news and connections into that account. Incredibly valuable information at your fingertips before you go and have that conversation. Also really recently released is a new lead page. So it's not just about the account. The account is one thing, but what about the human being that you're engaging with in that sales or marketing conversation? With this recently released feature in Sales Navigator new lead pages, it's a new way of visualizing what's going on with a person within a particular account. You can see what you share in common with that person. What groups do you share? What like interests do you have? Who can best make an introduction to you into that new, into that new space? Also, what content are they sharing? What updates are they sharing? This is an opportunity for you to think about what is the most meaningful way for me to engage. So that's another way to predict, help predict intent. Another recently released feature within Sales Navigator is a feature called Deals. I don't know if, has anyone tried Deals yet? Okay, so this is great. I'm gonna get you started on Deals. So Deals, this new feature allows you as a salesperson to stay in better connection with your sales manager and team in service of bringing a deal together. So with Sales Navigator deals, you can update this in Sales Navigator in real time, it maps over to your CRM, making you more efficient, and it keeps you more aligned on what the process is and who's in the buying circle and where are we in bringing this deal to close. I wanna highlight the buying circle feature within deals because I think it's incredibly powerful. So earlier I talked about how there are three, between three and six decision makers in a deal. Now, as a salesperson, I can keep track of who is involved in bringing that deal to fruition. And it's valuable to me as a marketer as well because I can see what kind of content I might need to create to support this deal. So this is another way that sales and marketing can come together and keep track of the buying circle as new people are introduced in the buying process. So we've spent some time talking about sales navigator features. I, want, I now wanna turn over to campaign manager and paint you a, vi a vision of the future that we're thinking about for campaign manager coming in 2019. So, Imagine with me, so this is a campaign man, a potential campaign manager view. So if we've sold into a particular account using propensity modeling, we know that there are similar accounts that we could sell into as well. What if there was a technology here that would bring those lookalike accounts so that you could review them and you could see information like their industry, number of employees, how are they growing? What is the connection density that you have? Do you have employees that are already connected into the people that work at that other company? What is their level of engagement with your company's content? And then also, what's the affinity? How, what's the, how do they feel about engaging with you? So using this information, you can make a powerful decision as a marketer and a salesperson about how you want to focus. Right? So maybe you want to focus on the accounts that already have a strong affinity with you, 
or maybe you want to warm up a accounts that are not yet engaged. So this is a vision of the future that we look forward to bringing to you next year. So we're all here, and we all know that relationships matter. So before we move into engagement, I want to highlight this chart really quickly because I, it continues to blow my mind. So looking at the green bars on the chart, this shows how connections drive decision maker acceptance rate. Looking at the 41%, when you attain, attend the same school as someone, that's a powerful driver of decision maker acceptance. Looking at the last green bar, if you attend the same school with someone at the same time, it does drive acceptance rate, 53%. But the thing that really blows my mind is that second bar, 51%. Having a common connection with someone is a driver for decision maker acceptance. That tells me how much relationships matter and that companies should invest more in getting connected, building and maintaining relationships and LinkedIn is a great tool to do that. So in terms of engagement, one of the tools I wanna to introduce that helps you make stronger connections and sh by sharing powerful content is LinkedIn Elevate. So with Elevate, marketers or a company can curate content and that content can be accessed by a sales team or all of the employees in a company and shared. So imagine what this does to bring the message of a company to a broader audience. Over on the other side, we've done some research on the power of employees, not just the salesperson or a marketer sharing content, a full employee network sharing the content. You can 10x your reach by having that happen. So I know we're looking at a flat slide, so I wanna like underscore this for you a little bit. 32 new connections means 32 human beings that you are now connected to that you weren't connected to before. So there is real power in not just having sales and marketing, but really your entire network, your entire team sharing content. So beyond building awareness with a tool like Elevate, one of the main challenges for salespeople is engaging in a meaningful and relevant way. How do you do that? We don't want to be irritating. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring value. So the best way to bring value is to understand what your lead, what the person, human being, cares about, what they stand for. So with Sales Navigator, you can see what news they're sharing, what updates they're making. What kind of content are they sharing? And these are all open doors for you to contribute value inside of that conversation. This is social selling. And then you can also send in-mail messages, which, by the way, have a higher open rate than standard email, especially when, for a salesperson, you don't have the lead's email address. Now you can still reach out to them using LinkedIn. And then finally, closing the deal. One of the biggest challenges for salespeople is that you'll put together a presentation, you'll do all this great work, you send it off in an email, and then it disappears into a black hole. And you're like, I thought this deal was gonna close, <laughs> right? Um, but the challenge is you don't know what happened to it. With Point Drive, with LinkedIn Point Drive, what you can do is create the content, marketing can create the content that serves the buying circle and answers the questions. Once that gets sent, you're now alerted when that content is viewed. And what if that person forwards that email to someone else and someone else opens that email? You can see who opened the email. And if they're a member of the buying committee that you weren't considering, you can then evolve your strategy and create new content to speak to that new person that's involved. So this is really powerful because it allows you to stay engaged. It allows you to have visibility into things that you didn't have visibility before and therefore have a stronger sale brought through to close. So now I want to turn to a case study. Uh, this is a company in the tech space that pulled all of these things together and took on a holistic strategy on LinkedIn. So to, this is, a, again, tech, a company in the tech space. I can't reveal who they are, but let me tell you the story. Much like company XYZ, 
They were targeting 15 million members on LinkedIn. What they discovered is that only 10% of the folks that the sales team was engaged with um, marketing was involved in providing coverage for. So a lot of potential being left on the table. In the last half of last year, they decided to do things differently. They realized there was a lot of potential being left on the table. So they broke down the silos between sales and marketing. They gave 100% of their sales team access to Sales Navigator. They took a data-driven approach to sales and marketing alignment and account-based programming, and they decided to team up. The way they decided to go about it is to have marketing focus on nurturing leads in a particular account prior to sales outreach, and then sales joined the process later in the game. What we found was a 40% quarter-over-quarter increase in engagement, and they were able to target the decision makers within the buying circle at, at a higher rate. In the end, they were able to close a $2 million deal. So this is just an example of what's possible, and they're continuing to invest and improve on this strategy with the flywheel method that we talked about uh, earlier in the presentation. So there's a lot that's possible. And on LinkedIn, we have, it's not just about the tools that we have. There are a lot of other tools that integrate into LinkedIn as well. I invite you to stop by the LinkedIn Lounge and learn more about the different integrations that we have that help you do this. But I want to point out there's not just one right way to do this. It's not about having the perfect tech stack, right? Um, it depends on what's important to your company, what your customers look like, how they like to engage. So it's not about having this perfect thing. What is important is thinking about what's the system that you want to create and of course, with anything, if you want to improve, it pays to make it a habit. So as we close out, I want to bring us back to why we're here and what's really important, and that is our focus on human beings, the customers that we serve. Right? We want to engage with them in a meaningful way, and those interactions should be providing value. So in doing so, it helps to bring sales and marketing together in a concerted effort to deliver a fabulous experience for our customers. So you want to have a unified customer view for stronger alignment. You, then you want to understand more about your, your audience and constantly iterate on that approach to serving them and providing a great experience. And then finally, you want to invest in process orchestration so that you can facilitate the type of engagement that your customers will be proud of, happy about, and never forget. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining the session. Thank you.